Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to have a look at another dead blog for the upcoming War Thunder update, and this one is for something Chinese. It is the PTL02. This is going to be China's first wheeled SPG in War Thunder, and it does have a ton of interesting stuff uh, which it actually has to do with. Uh, also, uh, the origins, I suppose, of this project start in the 80s when it comes to its chassis, which is pretty cool, and it also offers a a pretty nice 100 millimeter stabilized gun and since this is you know the first wheeled vehicle uh, that China is getting it should also uh, be added to some pretty stellar lineups if I believe the BR of this thing to be correct if it's any similar to what we already have in the game it will have its downsides though we'll have to see uh, what goes on with it but anyway let's get into the history section in the late 1980s, the Narinko Corporation, which is pretty much one of the fathers of the majority of the Chinese vehicles uh, that we see in the present day when it comes to military stuff, they successfully tested the Type 87 armored vehicle. The prototype of this was a 6x6 chassis of a prospective Type 90 armored personnel carrier with a 100mm anti-tank gun. So this thing was technically, the prototype of it came out in the late 80s. Even though the prototype vehicle was successfully or the prototype vehicle successfully passed the tests it wasn't put into service it was kind of left on the back burner and then the army authorities actually returned to the project in the early 90s so a few years later and in the when uh, they were looking at modernizing their uh, well i suppose their military the pla began to create these mobile motorized infantry formations and they needed needed some vehicles which would be able to support them. So therefore, the uh, Type 87 research that they'd done in the late 80s came in handy. And by 2003, so pretty much 10 to 15 years after the start of the project, on that same 6x6 chassis of the uh, new Chinese armored vehicles, you know, stuff such as the ZSL-92, the ZSL-92A, uh, a PTL-02 infantry support vehicle, a Appeared, and this had a 100mm smoothbore cannon in the turret. So this was designed for those mobile motorized infantry formations. <clears throat> the 19-ton infantry fire support vehicle possessed really good mobility, a weapon capable of pretty much destroying uh, fortifications and also armored vehicles. The only thing it would struggle against is stuff such as modern MBTs. And uh, that, you know, I suppose in game it doesn't really matter because it's probably not going to face them. And then the mass production of the PTL-02 has been going on since 2004, and the SPG is widely used by the Chinese army in many different roles. It's also produced for export in a version with a 105 mm Millimeter gun, which actually is able to fire all of the Western style ammunition, so basically the NATO standard ammunition. So, this machine um, could easily come as a premium or could come as an event vehicle for maybe another tech tree. This, um, or at least the chassis that this is based on, the WZ551s, this was used by a ton of different countries. Pretty much the whole of Africa uh, <laughs> used this uh, thing, which is pretty cool cool and also including people like Pakistan, you know, Indonesia, Iran's also in there, and also even Argentina uh, got four of these things uh, to be able to use. So this is a chassis which was produced a lot and also uh, was one which has been involved in a bunch of modern day wars, such as the, well, uh, the Somali Civil War, you know, the Boko Haram insurgency, even some interventions in Gambia. Uh, this this thing has been found so not the specific vehicle the PTL 02 itself but the APC armored vehicle idea that it is based upon
So the PTL-02 is coming to China as a rank 5 vehicle. It's going to be in the tech tree, so this thing isn't going to be a premium or event vehicle, so you're going to be able to research it alongside everything else. Because this thing is a rank 5 vehicle, it's probably going to have a BR of maybe 7.7 7 to 8.7, 7, something like that. My guess would be 8.0. If we have a look at some of the other vehicles around this BR, when it comes to the nations, you know, you have the Centauro at 8.0, and then you have other stuff such as the IFVs at 80 as well. It would make sense to me if the PTL-02 would also fall into that 80 bracket. It is a very lightly protected vehicle, and when I mean lightly protected, I mean it has um, not even enough, uh, it doesn't have enough uh, armor to be able to withstand really even anything heavier than a 12.7 millimeter machine gun, and that is through the front. So through the side, you're going to be able to eat this thing alive. This thing might as well not have armor at the end of the day the only thing it's going to protect you against is the 7.62 millimeter but think about it like this the fact is they changed the way that hull brake works very recently and because of the higher br that you go normally you run into way more kinetic rounds instead of heat rounds you know apf sds is king pretty much at top tier and because of that um it's actually a lot harder to hull brake a lot of vehicles um because of the change the change was made for hull brake that you weren't able to hull brake vehicles with kinetic rounds. So with AP or with APFSDS, but you were still able to hull brake vehicles with chemical rounds. Now, if this thing uh, sits at around about 8.0, which at least I believe it's going to, there's a lot of chemical rounds around that BR, but there's also the starting of stuff such as APFSDS. So it's going to be very hit and miss with this vehicle, uh, what you actually face and you know what you're going to or how you're going to be able to fight against it the 100 millimeter on this vehicle uh, should be very strong with the fact that it has apf sds and with the fact that it has heat as well so you can be able to choose uh, which one you are interested in the reason why I would put it at 80 or even maybe lower is because when I compare it to stuff like the Centauro, you know, it doesn't have thermals. Uh, it probably will have the laser rangefinder, but it doesn't have the mobility. And this is one of the key things that they don't actually talk about in the dev blog, which is very odd. Instead of talking about the engine power and all of this, they instead uh, say it, it should be an alternative to the Chinese BMP-1. Now, the BMP-1 is 7.3. If this thing comes in at 7.3, Three, that's great you know <laughs> that would be a lot of fun but i don't think it's going to and um, the uh the thing is with the engine power of this uh what it has is it has a very very small engine um when it when it comes to the overall vehicle so this thing weighs nineteen thousand kilos and it has a uh, engine it's a german designed bf8l 413f it's a four stroke eight cylinder turbocharged air cooled diesel engine and it has 320 horsepower and that's it you know it it's a 320 horsepower engine for nearly a 20,000 kilo vehicle, and that means that low end acceleration is going to be pretty bad on this thing, especially when you end up in winter conditions, or if you end up in desert conditions, places where wheeled vehicles generally struggle already. And I'm hoping that that won't be too much of a downside for it, um, because uh, that's you know always going to be something which at least is on my mind. When I look at vehicles like this, the general way to play them um, is to, you know, get to a aggressive position early, use it to either scout a lot of targets or use it to do some early damage and then try and push forward and create an initial advantage for your team. That's how I play a lot of IFVs. That's how I play a lot of these tank destroyer types, such as the Centauro, and it works pretty well. And I feel like with this machine, you could definitely do that. The only issue is the initial parts where you actually get to those power positions because of the unfortunate speed of the machine, at least what it's going to have. The survivability doesn't really mean too much if you're able to use the terrain as survivability and use your speed as survivability. But the fact is this thing won't really be able to. Even though this thing is labeled as an SPG, you know, it's not labeled as a light vehicle or anything like that, it would be, or I'm hoping that it gets scouting uh, just to give it an extra, you know, little uh, thing under 
under its um, a little you know like feather under its cap uh, for me if they're comparing it to the bmp1 which does also have scouting my guess is uh, at least it will which will be good and i suppose you could maybe up to this thing it really is going to depend on how good the APF SDS is. Normally these vehicles, uh, these wheeled vehicles with quite light turrets, generally don't have a great reload on them. Um, so that uh, also will be a little bit of a factor. And one of the interesting things about the chassis itself, it kind of reminds me of the Cheetah chassis. Now if you don't know what the Cheetah is, it was actually one of the prototypes of what eventually became the Roycat. And it's on the mind because, you know, we've been having <laughs> a look through a lot of South African stuff recently and uh, it's a very interesting design with this uh, you know the three uh, three wheels either side or the six by six sets and I'm wondering if we're going to get more vehicles like this in game we've seen a big expansion of wheeled vehicles in War Thunder over the last uh, few years and I don't see why that would change at all uh, going forward especially since a lot of militaries are going lighter with more firepower instead of heavy with more armor uh, just to suit uh, other conditions now i'm i'm just really hoping that this thing actually finds a place in the game you know china already has some pretty strong brs 8087 uh, are two very good brs for the chinese and as long as this one slots into that 80 lineup then i think it will be you know really good i'm just worried about the other factors they don't talk about what's the turret rotation going to be what's the engine power going to be what's the acceleration going to be going to be all of these factors are very key to a spg doing well and unfortunately at least right now we don't see any of those hopefully on the dev server we will though which will be important anyway i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time i'd just like to thank teddy john ryman universe a conte baraka trigger hippie eugens terry ambrosius mcclellan Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Hosest Cachot, Hans, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.